two days after the la largest climate change march in history, more than 120 world leaders gathered here in New York for a one-day United Nations Climate Summit. Tuesday's meeting took place ahead of the larger 200 Nations Summit in Paris in 2015, when delegates will attempt to finalize an agreement to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon hosted Tuesday's summit. Uh, today was a great day, a historic day. Never before have so many leaders gathered to commit to action on climate change. I thank every one of you who came to New York with ambition and commitment. A new coalition of governments, business, finance, multilateral development banks, and civil society leaders announced their commitment to mobilize upwards of $200 billion for financing low carbon and climate resilient development. As we work together on the road to Lima and Paris, in December 2015, uh, December 2014 and 2015, let us look back on today as the day we decided, as a human family, to put our house in order, to make it livable for future generations. Uh, today's summit has shown that we can rise to the climate challenge. Hollywood actor and environmental activist Leonardo DiCaprio also addressed the UN summit on climate change on Tuesday. He was recently named a United Nations messenger of peace. Now must be our moment for action. We need to put a price tag on carbon emissions and eliminate government subsidies for oil, coal and gas companies. We need to end the free ride that industrial polluters have been given in the name of a free market economy. They do not deserve our tax dollars. They deserve our scrutiny, for the economy itself will die if our ecosystems collapse. This is the most urgent of times and the most urgent of messages. Honored delegates, leaders of the world, I pretend for a living, but you do not. The people made their voices heard on Sunday around the world, and the momentum will not stop. But now it is your turn. The time to answer humankind's greatest challenge is now. We beg of you to face it with courage and honesty. While 120 leaders took part in the UN Climate Summit, the leaders of several key nations, including China, India, and Russia, opted not to attend. President Obama addressed the summit. Because of the almost unprecedented effort of this coalition, I think we now have an opportunity to send a very clear message that the world is united, that uh, all of us uh, are committed to making sure that we degrade and ultimately destroy uh, not only ISIL, but also uh, the kinds of uh, extremist ideologies that would lead to so much bloodshed. We turn back to President Obama. As one of America's governors has said, we are the first generation to feel the impact of climate change and the last generation that can do something about it. So today I am here personally as the leader of the world's largest economy and its second largest emitter to say that we have begun to do something about it. The United States has made ambitious investments in clean energy and ambitious reductions in our carbon emissions. We now harness three times as much electricity from the wind and ten times as much from the sun as we did when I came into office. Within a decade, our cars will go twice as far on a gallon of gas, and already every major automaker offers electric vehicles. We've made unprecedented investments to cut energy waste in our homes and our buildings and our appliances, all of which will save consumers billions of dollars, and we are committed to helping communities build climate-resilient infrastructure. So all told, these advances have helped create jobs, grow our economy, and drive our carbon pollution to its lowest levels in nearly two decades, proving that there does not have to be a conflict between a sound environment and strong economic growth. Also on Tuesday, more than 30 countries set a deadline to end deforestation by 2030. But Brazil, which has the largest continuous rainforest in the world, refused to sign on. 
saying the plan conflicts with its own laws and targets. If successful, the plan could reduce carbon emissions by an estimated 8 billion tons per year, the equivalent of emissions by all of the world's 1 billion cars. For more, we're joined by two guests here in New York. Bianca Jagger is with us, the International Union for Conservation of Nature's ambassador for the Bond Challenge. Their goal to restore 150 million hectares of the world's degraded and deforested lands by 2020. Bianca Jagger joined the People's March Sunday with the Indigenous Bloc. She's also founder and chair of the Bianca Jagger Human Rights Foundation. And Asad Raymond is with us, head of International Climate for Friends of the Earth. We last spoke with him at the UN Climate Summit in Doha in 2012. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! The significance, Assad, of the People's March on Sunday, 400,000 people marching, flooding Wall Street, thousands on Monday, and then the UN People's Summit on Tuesday. Uh, absolutely. I think it's a, a pivotal moment, an historic moment. Uh, over the last few years, we have seen the climate movement growing again. We see it at, at the local level in the resistance. We see it to fracking, to oil exploration, to even the solutions in terms of community energy around the world. But this was a moment where we could bring all of those voices together, to express them, to make sure that we were calling for the kind of action that people not only require, but that the planet requires. So it's a beginning and it's a start, but it's a long history. And I think anybody who went on that demonstration could only walk away energized and more committed that the power of, uh, lies in our hands and not in that building uh, there here in New York in the UN summit. Bianca Jagger, your feelings, you've been working on this issue for years. I feel that we cannot rely upon the leaders of the world. Climate change is the greatest challenge that we are facing in the century. And I feel that the reason why people as attention was galvanized and that people came out in the street and you saw at least 400,000 people in that march is that we understand clearly that it's not going to be the leaders of the world who will make the decision to have a globally binding uh, treaty by, by the time that we have the, the UNFCCC or the UN Conference on Climate Change, but that unfortunately will have to be us. And the, that is the reason why I accepted to be um, the IUCN uh, ambassador for the, the, um, the Bond Challenge. And what is the Bond Challenge? Uh, the Bond Challenge is the largest uh, commitment for, for uh, restoration uh, of land in the world. It's a hundred, we, the objective is 150 million hectares of land by 2020 and 350 by 2030. So uh, what, what is the difference between reforestation and, uh, and restoration? Is that restoration uh, in, you know, includes and, uh, and, is in, in, it, and works together with, uh, with uh, communities and it is to improve the livelihood, to improve security, to, to include water, to improve. So is in each one of those communities and each those different countries will have a say as to it is. And what we did is that in, in, in Brazil at the Rio Plus 20, we had 20 million hectares that were pledged. Among those, where 15 by the U.S. and President Obama spoke about it uh, in, the, in his speech yesterday. But yesterday we have um, countries like, um, like the Congo, Niger, Colombia, Ethiopia, Guatemala, uh, and Uganda. And it, was, it amounted to 35 million hectares of land that they had pledged to restore. That comes to um, 55 million hectares of land that we already have the pledge. Now, if we are able to achieve the 150 million hectares of land, uh, or restore that land, what it will amount to is to, uh, we will remove 1 billion tons of carbon from the atmosphere, which will reduce the emission gap by 11 to 17 percent. That is enormous. But what is really important to understand about restoration, because a lot of people understand what is uh, reforestation, but don't understand what is restoration, is that it, it is working together with communities, with the people. They are the ones that are being consulted as to how they want to do it. And you were asking about about, about, for example, Brazil, uh, even though the government has not done, that is uh, in, in the Rio Plus 20, we had 
the Mata, the, the Mata Atlantica of, of Brazil that, that made a pledge and it is a combination of government, uh, business and private sector. So it's not only governments that can make a pledge. You can have a pledge as well by landowners and by business and people who are owners of land. And, and I think that it is a hope because we cannot really rely upon leaders to do what is necessary. I don't believe anymore that they have the will to do what is necessary to prevent catastrophic climate change. Therefore, we need initiatives like the initiative of the bond challenge. And by the way, uh, Hector is about two and a half acres. Uh, and Bianca Jaga, could you explain how it is that the bond challenge will feed into, if at all, uh, whatever possible uh, UN uh, climate agreement might be reached, and specifically on this question of restoration? Well, um, I don't know how it will. It will, of course, uh, because it had to do with the reduction of, of CO2 emissions, but it is an, an initiative that is outside of you know, the, the UN um, agreement. It may be that by the time we come to, to, uh, to Paris, it will be part of it. But it is an initiative that... Does the IC IUCN not work with the UN? Oh, yes, of course questions? it works. In fact, let, let me maybe explain a little bit about how it came about. Uh, it was uh, in Bonn, and it was a meeting of governments, of, um, of, uh, uh, of civil society, of um, grassroots organization, of business uh, together came up with the idea that it was important to, uh, to have the bond challenge to uh, restore 150 million hectares of land. Of course there is, you know, it's always working with the UN, but I don't know if this will be part of the, the treaty on, on all the negotiations that we will have with the UN. We're going to break and then come back to this discussion, also talk about the issue of fracking, a concern of people all over the United States. Um, Prime Minister Cameron had words about fracking, uh, and certainly not against it, as President Obama has spoken in the past. Our guests are Bianca Jagger, who is the International Union for Conservation of Nature's Ambassador for the Bond Challenge, uh, as well as uh, Assad Raymond, who is head of the International Climate.